Okay, so thank you everybody for joining us on this webinar, this uh, final uh, installment, this crescendo, shall we say, to the 2023 Gaelic for Mothers and Others sponsored by Sports Direct uh, webinar series. And tonight I am absolutely delighted to be joined by Emma Murphy. Um, I let Emma do her, her own introductions, um, but she has kindly agreed uh, to come on and deliver for us uh, this evening, as I said, in the final instalment uh, of the, the series. So this is Ladies in Leadership. Um, it's from Gaelic from uh, Gaelic for Mothers and Others participants to beginner um, to, uh, to beginner to being a leader in the club. Um, so the experience of gaining confidence, um, tools and, and routes to becoming leaders of their clubs and communities. So um, as I said, I will let Emma do her own introductions, but um, by way of a couple of little bits of information I found out about Emma yesterday, uh, just in a quick call that we had was that she's actually coaching uh, her under 15s. Uh, in the club and she's uh, she's quite proud of their their achievements this year um, and I suppose Emma will tell you all, all else that she does uh, in both her, her sporting life and her uh, professional and political life but um, just incredible to see somebody who's who's you know taking part in ladies game football albeit in still in the competitive strand giving back to their club um, so it just shows that the, the, if the opportunity is there for you to, to jump in, I suppose, trying to frame that as well. And the other th little bit of important information is that Emma is actually missing her AGM to deliver this uh, webinar. So she's I know she's absolutely devastated uh, over missing her as I had mine last week. Um, I came out of it really energised. Um, so um, thanks to Emma for uh, for sacrificing her, her AGM uh, to come on and deliver this webinar uh, series for us. So listen, I'm going to ha hand over to Emma. I will be uh, in the background and um, keeping an eye on the chat. As I said, if there's any issues or if you have any questions or anything like that, type it in the chat and I will get to it at the end. So I'll hand over to Emma. Cheers, Vinny. Uh, so uh, evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming on. And uh, on a very cold minus one, it's a minus one here in Dublin, so I'm not sure how it is around the country, but um, hopefully you've got a cup of tea in your hand and uh, we won't keep it too long. Um, thanks to Vinny for the invite um, and to the LGFA and for the Gaelic from Others and Others and Sports Direct for the invite. I'm really delighted to come on and talk about women in leadership. There's nothing that I like talking about more than women and how to empower them and how to get more women in leadership roles and particularly in sport, which is my, look, it's my first love. And um, the LGFA in particular has been very good to me. And um, so I was thrilled to be asked to come on and have a chat tonight about kind of, you know, my own experiences in leadership um, and my own background and then um, how to empower others and empower people within our fantastic organisation to get involved. And that's really kind of the crux of tonight. So um, first of all, I'll probably tell you a little bit about myself. And I kind of tend to do that in um, in pictures. Um, I don't know why this isn't moving for me. Get it to move. One sec. Um, so have a good have a rundown of what's going to happen tonight. So just a bit of an introduction. Um, we'll go through kind of some challenges that women face and why women don't actually tend to step up into leadership roles um, as much as they should do. Um, I've asked a couple of my friends uh, from across the, the spectrum of the LGFA uh, for a couple of mini case studies. So I'll introduce you to them as well. Um, all of the roles that we can get involved in and how to get them. And it's all right, it's okay about all these roles being there and being available, but it's how do we actually get them? How do we get ourselves involved and how do we empower ourselves to get involved in those? Um, we'll talk a little bit about women and their capabilities and their assets and that probably the unknown and some of the capabilities that women never tend to think that they have. Um, the key attributes for female leaders and then some recipes to succeed um, in my own humblest of opinions. And then I'd be absolutely delighted to answer any questions that people might have if you want to fire them into the chat or to the Q&A as we, as we go along as well. So <clears throat> just uh, I suppose a little bit about myself. Um, I'll start kind of with the with the personal side. So you kind of I have three P's in my life, my personal, my professional, my political, but I'll start with the kind of personal side. So um that young man there in the middle is um our 15 week old son Oshin, who's um who came along um at the start of August uh, to myself and Caroline. Caroline's there in the top left hand corner. Um Caroline's my wife, she's a county player at Roscommon. Uh we're not allowed to talk about whether or not she's retired or not. 
that's a sensitive subject in our house. Uh, but uh, post pregnancy, we'll see if she returns next year. Um, and uh, married to Caroline for the last four and a half years. Um, and uh, Oshin came along this year. So as you can see, straight in and part of the GAA, straight in part of the LGFA and the club. He was our he's our my under fifteen mascot. Uh, for the last number of weeks, tried the championship, uh, rocked up in his jersey, and he's uh, delighted to be there as well. Um, uh, uh, professionally, I work for Sightsavers. I work for Sightsavers um, Ireland. I'm the head of communications and public affairs. Um, love my day job. It's a fantastic day job. Um, brilliant people, uh, brilliant people, brilliant organization, and uh, very privileged to be um, working with uh, with the organization um, here in Dublin um, as well. And then I have a little bit of um, a little bit of political side of my house as well. I'm a councillor in South Dublin. I'm the former mayor of South Dublin. I just finished a, a year as mayor of South Dublin, and that was the biggest privilege uh, that I've ever had politically. Um, it was just such an honour and a privilege, and it was great fun. And I absolutely thoroughly enjoyed my year. Um, and it was something that I never thought I'd do, uh, but it actually really um gave me a um a massive boost um across across my across my personal life, my political life, and my professional life as well. Um, my involvement in the GAA and the LGFA, I'm the club PRO for Wanderers GAA um, in Ballyboden, actual Ballyboden up the mountains, um, a small rural club uh, growing, uh, which is fantastic. I've been coaching the under 15s girls since they were under eight. Um, I was supposed to coach them for a week um, and I'm still with them. And I still play on the ladies team uh, for now with the 15s coming through. Hopefully we'll make the rest of us retire um, uh, fairly quickly as much as we possibly can. And um, they've been quite successful over the last couple of years. The 15s, they've just won two county titles in a row. So um, very privileged to be uh, to be managing them. Um, so they're a lovely bunch of girls and, and thrilled to be working with them as well. So um, that's a little bit kind of about me um, in terms of kind of background. Um, and I think that most of my roles within the GA, apart from actually this year um i was uh, very very privileged to be part of the management team for the dublin under 14s uh, under 14 girls a lovely bunch of young girls um the future is really really bright and in, in um in ladies football right across the country we got to meet so many so many kids and so many so many kids and so many coaches that are involved in county teams throughout the, the throughout the season and it was just such a privilege and great to see that the future is really really bright in football uh, from a playing perspective but also from a participation perspective in terms of coaching um uh, refereeing administration involvement so really really super um i was part of the uh, learn to lead program uh in 2021 i think 2020 2021 um and with, with the LGFA and that was something that really kick started um me professionally I, it gave me a really restart in terms of uh, my own kind of professional uh position it gave me a huge level of empowerment um a wonderful bunch of new friends and people that I can kind of uh, touch base with and rely on um and that's something that um anybody that's involved in in sport really really needs as well so um that was something that i was that i'll always be very grateful to the lgfa for as well so uh moving on i wanted first of all to kind of chat about some of the challenges for aspiring women in leadership roles and um i'm going to give some examples as we kind of go through these um but one the first one i think i wanted to talk about was kind of being treated equally and i suppose being treating it being treated equally um ourselves amongst ourselves but also being treated equally being perceived to be treated equally uh, within our own sphere um a lot of the time we find with women that we kind of say we're not being treated equally and what are what there's reasons behind that and why um why do we feel like we're not being treated equally um and that is a challenge. If you get it into your own head that you're not being treated equally, you kind of step away from something. And it's actually having the tools and resources to actually kind of recognize equity and equality uh, and realizing how we can actually kind of, you know, empower to get involved. Another big challenge is garnering support from other women. As much as we think, I, my firm belief in life is that if you put a group of women into a room and you have a task to get done, it'll get done. There is nobody better than a group of women to get something done. But I can definitely tell you from a political perspective, garnering support from other women is one of the biggest challenges that I have um, uh, as a politician, as a female politician. Um, I would generally get an awful lot more support from my male colleagues than I would from my female colleagues. And I don't know if that's something that's very much uh, within a political spectrum. Um, but I do think that it, I, you can see it within sport as well 
well. Um, and it's, you know, garnering support from other women is a challenge and it's a task that we actually have to try and undertake a, a little bit better. And women kind of need to be kinder to each other. They're, because they're, they generally have a more task orientated roles, a lot of the time it can be um challenging for women to actually work together and to get support from each other um and we kind of are our own worst enemy sometimes in not supporting women who actually are elevated into are elevated into certain roles um you know it can be extraordinarily challenging and um one of the best things that i've ever been involved in is a women's caucus that we set up inside dublin to support women who want to be involved in political life um, and by actually having that full uh, focus on women supporting each other and women being able to be open with each other about, you know, how their experiences of how they've been treated by other women in the past, you actually broke that barrier and got through it. Um, and it was really, really important to do that so that the Women's Caucus could thrive. Um, and I found that within the Learn to Lead programme as well, that you just... There was just that support was there from day one because you had a common goal and purpose and garnering support from other women is so vital um, because if you don't, if you've if you, the challenges with succeeding just become, uh, they just become more and more difficult. Confidence, it, being confident, it's easy to say be confident, um, but being confident means it, it, there's a whole host of tools that you need to do to get and to to get and to have to actually be confident in actually aspiring to be within a leadership role I was doing a coaching course recently um, and the numbers of women on that course depleted and it continued to deplete um, as each night went on because they didn't feel that they were confident um, in the material and carrying that material forward and actually executing that material no men dropped out and I can actually tell you that the women on the course had actually more coaching experience than 90% of the men on the course, but they didn't believe that they actually were confident enough to deliver that material. So they decided to step away. No matter what you said to them about the, you know, you can gain the confidence, you know, you can, you can, you know, there's like a learning piece within the materials didn't matter. They were not a hundred percent confident in the material. So they stepped away. That confidence piece is so, so crucial. And we as women need to actually recognize that men a lot of the time will fake it till they make it and they will you know get get themselves through to say look sure i like this material i'll get myself through or i'll pick something else whereas we as women tend to want to know everything about every component so that we're confident with all of the material because we feel that we need to perform at a higher level and a higher standard than our male than our male equivalents at times and that's something that is stopping us uh, from actually moving into leadership roles speaking up uh, i'm a talker as you probably have noticed by now but i'm a talker and i tend to uh i I have a lot of experience in public speaking. I've been trained in public speaking. It's my job. It's my day job. It's my night job, as my mother calls my political life. Um, but it and I speak in front of groups of people uh, at all times, probably during the week and during the day, during my my day to day and my day to day role. It isn't something that actually came naturally to me. It's something that is alert is learned for me. But speaking and speaking up are two different things. So speaking up. Generally, women will tell you when there's something wrong, when there's something that's that's gone wrong, that they're not happy with, they will put their hand up and say, I think this is wrong. A lot of the time, our male, our, our male counterparts might be sitting at the back of the room saying, oh, it's grand, we'll let her talk and we'll let her create the problem. That sometimes can actually have a barrier role. So it's trying to get that balance between speaking up because it's the right thing to do and speaking up and being seen in a, in, uh, in a context that we are speaking up for the right reasons and that how we're delivering uh, what we're trying to say as well. That is a really, really difficult thing to do. And it's a really difficult thing to get a balance with as well. And it is it is a big challenge and it is a barrier to women actually ascending in leadership roles because again women are held to a higher standard in terms of their content and their delivery and that's really something um, that is a massive challenge. Um, building alliances with decision makers. When we're talking about our involvement um, from uh, the, the title tonight is from Gaelic from Gaelic and mother to from uh, I'm going to start that again from Gaelic and mother Gaelic for mothers and others all the way to club leaders. Our roles within our organization, within the LGFA, 
are vast and varied. And there are variances, uh, vari various different alliances right across the board that you need to build, you need to educate yourself, you need to know who's who and what's what in our organization. Our organization is growing, um, but there are so many roles uh, within our organization for people to fill. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit a, a little bit later on, but building those alliances with people in decision-making in decision making roles, if that's within your club, if you're going, if you're somebody that's coaching a Gaelic from others and others group and you need 20 footballs, who makes the decision as to whether or not you get you make to, you get the money for 20 footballs? How do you go about that? If you're coaching juvenile girls team and they don't have a set of jerseys, decision making per person with the in terms of finance who's making the decision in relation to pitch allocations how do I get my say and I need the pitch on a Saturday morning from 11 to 12 how do I get in a, a, ahead of others how do I build those alliances and decision making and that's a challenge a lot of the time because we generally struggle to actually know who's who and what's what because our organizations are well established and long-term established so new entrants into the organizations can find it really really difficult and find it off-putting so you know that is something that uh, we really need to address as our organizations are growing um again the asking for money bit um I hate asking for money. It is probably, uh, if something has a price tag on it, I will pay that price tag. It is a bone of contention at home that I, have the like bargaining, bartering, even considering asking for discounts. It's just, it, it actually makes me feel ill. Uh, and I know that I'm not alone. Um, but women going into leadership roles and asking for money is a massive challenge. Um, even though their cause and their need is just as justifiable than any sort of equivalent that you might have, you know, in a male football team or a male hurling team, or even if it's like, you know, a set of jumpers, a set of tops, a set of bibs, asking for that money, generally they will try and find it in some other way rather than asking for that money or finding the route to ask for that money. And so asking for money um, is something that really is, um, it's a skill. It is a massive, massive skill. It's something I don't have um, and it's a big challenge. And um, so that is something that um, is a barrier for women as well. Women speaking on their own accomplishments, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit later on in, in our case studies bit, but Women actually telling you about their accomplishments is something that um is something that is very rare, and you have to generally extract it. You tell it, women telling you about their achievements, about their positive positive achievements, they will completely underplay it um all of the time, and you see it right across the board. Um, if you know, it, you see it in terms of. Uh, you, you see it in terms of sporting achievements. You see it in terms of um, underplaying kind of, you know, their, their own roles in success. And um, you see it, you see it in terms of their professional environments. But it is something that um, is, you know, as we look at our, our as we look at our day to day components of our organizations, um, you can actually you can see it on a day to day basis. Uh, th we have a, a management team um, for our under 15s girls There's two males and two females. Um, uh, I'm the manager. I've been the manager all the way through. We've one manager, three, three me and three mentors and we've an FLO as well. And they're, they're we're a fantastic team all of the time. A, a, there will be um somebody will come up on us uh, from an opposing team and they'll ask for the manager and look straight past me and they'll look for a male that is a um, on the management team even though it's a it's a girls team um and we don't have um enough females within our kind of within our organization talking about their accomplishments um on a very pronounced basis and i think that that's something that you really um that we really need to address and um, we've talked about a little bit about overcoming perfectionism when we were talking about being confident, but women leaders tend to be perfectionists. We tend to be the red, red, blue uh, perfection, perfection setters, and we work harder to get to that point. And overcoming perfectionism and knowing that, do you know what, maybe 95% is okay, is something that you're never going to knock out of women. Um, it is inbuilt into us. Uh, we actually feel that we actually have to be that 1%, that 1% better all of the time because it is, um, because it is 
completely inbuilt into us. We feel like it is expected of us um, and we feel like we need to do it because um, we feel like that we're not being treated equally. And all of the other challenges actually probably lead to that overcoming of perfectionism. Um, and that is another big challenge for women actually ascending into leadership roles. And then the final one is really trusting your gut. Um, generally, I'm not the biggest um, gut truster. I will be more on the kind of perfectionism side and get everything kind of right. Um, but trusting our gut is not something that we do well. Um, and it is a, one of the biggest challenges that we have. And generally, when we trust our gut, we're, 90, we're 99% right. Um, and that, that's it's fairly well proven. And it is something that it's, again, it's a confidence one. It's actually building up our own kind of confidence and self-trust. Um, and that is something that is a big challenge to women uh, getting involved. They We don't trust ourselves to say, I can actually do that well. I can do, there's a role there. Trust your gut and say, do you know what? I actually could do it really, really well. But we don't trust ourselves enough to actually put ourselves forward. And there's there, we're going to ask, why did we do that? So they're just some of the challenges in terms of women in leadership roles two of my friends are going to be a uh, couple of my case studies um Siobhan was a colleague of mine um on the learn to lead program and Siobhan always notes herself as a as a late starter to the LGFA um so she but she's one of the most inspirational people that I've ever met and she has such a love for the organization um and she she had a, she was a fan she was an lgfa fan she loved football at club level at county level she was so well able to talk about football talk about football and talk about the lgfa and then it was through her own kind of children's involvement and um, that she kind of got involved in in the lgfa um but the learn to lead program really took siobhan out of her comfort zone and challenged and forced her to challenge some of the challenges that we've just kind of spoken about, including um, including uh, being a co-commentator on county games during uh, during the championship season in um, in 2022. And she was absolutely brilliant at it, but she was so meticulous at her planning, like her planning. Like I remember looking at her um, at her clipboard and it was just like it was meticulous in terms of her her playing facts and being involved. It was just absolutely brilliant. I did, I did a co-commentary and I wasn't half as prepared as Siobhan um, and I, I completely felt underprepared and it, after after speaking to her but she was she's gotten involved at so many different levels uh, throughout the organization um, and it's an example of somebody who never had the opportunity to play but got involved as a fan who's now the PRO for her ladies club she's the social media manager for her men's club and she's used a lot of the tools and resources that have been available within the LGFA to actually get into the positions that she's in. Um, she headed up the um, the LGFA's One Good Club initiative. And that was something that gave her kind of an empowerment and a voice and a profile within her own club uh, to kind of assimilate that, lead on that. And it was something that she did um, just after um, just after she did the LGFA, the Learn to Lead program. Um, and she's now the PRO for the ladies club and the, and the social media manager for the men's club. And if somebody is a, P, a PRO for, uh, for the G, uh, for our own GA club, it, it's a big job, you know, it's, it's a big job. And actually taking on the role can be challenging at times because you're dealing with people that are, uh, everybody wants to see their teams profiled on the club page. Everybody wants to see their children profiled on the club page. One minor mistake or forgetting somebody in a photo or not tagging someone or you know, somebody feeling kind of underwhelmed can or underwhelmed or under supported can actually come back to bite you really quickly and really easily. And Siobhan is meticulous and she does it so, so well. And their social media pages are top notch. And she's kind of self-trained and self-learned uh, to make sure that um, the that the work that she's doing for the club um is of an excellent standard and that's something that is really really brilliant um she looked uh, I love the photo actually and interestingly the two the two um the two case studies that I'm going to show both of them are pictures in Crow Park I don't have a picture in Crow Park myself ever um not since I was a small child but they're both of them on the pitch in Crow Park so you see Siobhan receiving her one good club award and it, um it it's uh, she says at the bottom, it'll be the closest opportunity that I'll ever have playing, uh, be on the playing field on All Ireland Final Day, which was on the playing field on All Ireland Final Day in a in a capacity that was empowering our organisation. And it's it's an example of somebody 
who's a non-player, who's so heavily involved in our organization, making a difference in a leadership role and finding her niche and space within the organization to make a difference in the organization. And I, I just think she's brilliant. Uh, my second case study is actually a clubmate of mine. Um, so uh, this is my clubmate, Karen White. Uh, she's from Wanderers GA Club in Balagoden. Um, and the picture of, is of herself and her daughter, Kiva, um, and, uh, in, in Crow Park, as you'll all see. Uh, Karen is a is a lifetime player um, within a club. Uh, but as she's gotten into parenthood, um, she's kind of gotten involved in various different aspects of the club that she traditionally wouldn't have been involved in. So she's gone into the administration side, even though she's still playing on the ladies team um, as well. But Karen is the club treasurer. And one of the really interesting parts I, I thought was really lovely about her uh, when she sent me on this, that her one of the teachers that taught her in primary school, um, John Boyle, is actually the assistant chair, and she now sits beside him as a treasurer. So she's come into a leadership role as the treasurer of our club, um, for the last number of years, and you know she's now um sitting on an equal an equal power at a at a table with somebody who actually taught her in primary school, and I think it's a lovely synergy, um, her daughter Kiva and her daughter Neve um are are both involved in the club. And Karen, as she started on, started up, uh, there was no camogie when she first got involved in the club. And she, um, we had only started juvenile football in 2018 in the club. So um, that was something that, um, or 2017, and she actually came out, came on board um, in, or in 20, 2020 and started the camogie side of the house. And um, so there's three camogie teams now in the club. And it's all a testament to her hard work and her effort that she get the camogie off the ground. And um, she's when she wrote this, she uh, and I'd edited it. Um, she had written on that, and um, this is just women actually underselling themselves. I remain as a player for a ladies' football team, and I love every minute with three championship medals. Um, she'd actually written two championship medals, and she'd taken herself out for one championship because she was pregnant with Neve. And I put her in as three championship medals because she was fully part of the squad and fully part of the team. Yes, she doesn't recognize that as as her she's underselling her achievements um and you know i texted her to tell her i was making the change um because it she 100 percent is three championship medals um and i think it's it's really really important um that we recognize particularly it's it's a fantastic thing from a playing perspective i see with my own wife you know she gave birth in august She's preparing to go back into club football at the moment. She's back out running and training and racing, um, which is, you know, mad as it is, but absolutely brilliant. But there's a role, the, the role of women who have had children who are still playing within our organization and empowering them and giving them the skills to actually become kind of leaders to say, this is absolutely the way we should be, it, it, the way we should be going. We should be supporting women who have had children to come back and play. Um, it's, you know, it's really, really vital and really important. Um, so I, I think, you know, Karen actually trying to undersell herself and say she only has two championship medals is something that I don't like to, um, I would never let her away with. Um, but this is her proudest moment and her highlight um, was uh, taking her Go Games team um, with her daughter uh, to Crow Park um, earlier this year. Um, big day for the club, a big day for for them as a family. And it's lovely to see kind of female, female, Karen's such a female role model uh, within our club. She's she's a mum, she's a coach, she's a player, uh, she's a member of the executive committee. Um, and, you know, she's so well respected and it's um, it, how she kind of goes about her business is something that I really, really respect. And um, which is why I use her as another example of um, of being so, being somebody that's right across the club and fully immersed in the club. Um, so it's great to see that as well. One of the things I wanted to talk about was roles and how to get them. Um, and I just pulled out. 20, or I think 20 off the top of my head. And I just kept typing 20, 20, 20. 20. There were roles. There's a space. The one thing I want to say about a better organization is there's a space for everybody to be involved in our organization. And if any club tells you that there's no space for you to be involved, you know, we're a volunteer, we're an organization made up of volunteers. We are everybody that's involved in our organization is a volunteer. And that's the beauty of it. And it's growing and it's thriving because of the volunteering component that we have and because of the need for volunteers. We would be nothing and nowhere without our volunteers. Um, and there's a role 
within every club for anybody who wants to be involved and we need more people involved and how do you get involved I mean there's the as I said on the top there there's coaching mentoring there's the bonnet store you know it's our coaching courses um it's you know if, if you want to be involved in coaching you know there's avenues throughout the the LGFA and throughout your clubs to get involved to do your foundation course or whatever they're calling it these days I think it changes name nearly every week do your foundation course do your safeguarding do your vetting um you know be involved and uh, one of the best things I ever did was get three parents uh female parents of mine involved who just said that they just didn't want it they'd love to volunteer and how could they volunteer but they didn't want to coach and we got them safeguarded, we got them vetted, we actually got them to do the coaching course, uh, but they are present and around the team um, without actually being directly coaching. They're supporting kind of the girls and um, they're an emotional support for, for the girls around our team. And I think that's like, it's really, really important to have those uh, female visible, uh, females visible um, around teams at all times, because as girls get older, um, they need more outlets. They need, like, if I'm, if there's demands on me from a coaching perspective, taking a training session and somebody's having a bad day, there's always someone there for them to have a chat with as well. Like we are crying out for administrators and getting involved Go going to your AGM and now I'm not going to my own club AGM tonight, but I'm sure I'll come out with a job um in in my absence. And that generally happens when you're not there, you actually get nominated for more things than anything else. But um going to your club AGM and actually understanding how your club actually functions if you're a member of your club you're fully entitled to be at your AGM um, and go going to your AGM you'll actually learn more about the club than you would on anything else throughout the year you'll know about your membership you'll know about your registrations you'll know about you'll know about what's happened in the club how the money has been spent how much money is needed um, you know how much needs to be fundraised you'll learn about grants and sports capital grants and all of the different roles that go throughout the club but you'll also see how and they operate and how the roles are, are given and how they're voted in and how they're not voted in. And sometimes it is that there is a space going, God, we need a registrar this year. Is there somebody with administrative skills that would look, that could do that? Um, and, you know, getting involved in your club AGMs, uh, and this is the season for them at the moment, is really, really important. And that's where you can actually get involved in that non-playing side of the house uh, that we feel that we that we don't know how to get involved in at times. Refereeing is, oh, is something we're crying out for at the moment, and it is such um, an under um under respected job um at the moment and i just anybody that puts themselves forward to be a referee just deserves to be put a, a hand on the back and clapped at the moment um it's i'm delighted to see numbers coming through my own club actually at the moment four young referees came through um the last few weeks and um as new go games referees which is just brilliant and we should have more and more people involved in kind of refereeing but again the tools and resources are available from the lgfa to get involved in refereeing courses they're constantly being advertised and um, so if you think that you are that person for the person in the middle stick your hand up and uh, we have some phenomenal referees throughout our organization um, and we need more of them as well playing is something that we have structures within our organization now that there is no excuse for anybody not to play um gaelic for mothers and others for me is one of the gems of sport and it's been replicated and stolen by other sports you're now seeing social basketball you're seeing social football you're seeing social camogie but Gaelic for mothers and others was the first to do it and you're seeing GAA for lads and dads and all of those types of things we are uh, we were leaders in it and the support that's there from the LGFA and from sports direct to sponsors is just it's just phenomenal and you can see the blitz is every year it is absolutely democratic I can't wait to retire take my two years out and go and play with our Gaelic for mothers and others they traverse the 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 province playing blitzes and games and they um they love uh, they love playing together and it is the perfect um entry for anybody who wants to entry or exit for anybody who wants to be involved and play the game um and i th i think it's fantastic and one of the things we're seeing in our own club actually is our number of our our female numbers are growing um and the ability levels are are from county footballers to girls who are who are newbies um and that is like that's brilliant uh, and it's just 
it is completely empowering for everybody else because some people don't want to really play competitively, but they'd love to be part of the team. And then if they don't want to play competitively, they can at the playing with the mothers and others is just so fantastic. It's such a great outlet. We had our club night the other night and we actually had um uh, our Gaelic for Mothers and Others uh club champion of the year. Um and we renamed it Mammy of the Year uh for the person who um and for the person who won it. Um, but it was just, it was brilliant. It was the first time we'd ever done it. And it was just, it's it's absolutely fantastic. And um, so there is that um entry for people to be involved as well. When we're looking at skills, you know, um, when we're looking at the kind of skills, you know, we have our game from others and others, we've got club players, we've got county players, you know, there from a playing perspective, we've got that broad spectrum. And get like, you know, getting involved is as easy as bring a friend to bring a friend. If you see something advertised, bring a friend with you. You'll guaranteed you'll stay. If you get if you take put your foot across the threshold once, you'll stay. And that is the beauty of, of our sport. Um into one of the best entries I think into our into our game at the moment is um the female liaison officer. I think it's been such a, a such um such a, a brilliant um addition to uh, to our game. It's so needed in terms of protecting our young people and looking after our young people, but also um our um also women players as well. But it's having a new cohort of people who are very balanced, um, very organized people who are kind of emotionally um emotionally emotionally settled and balanced being involved in teams and actually the the provision of having an FLO I think is actually game changing and you can see it right across the or across the board it's a brilliant way to get involved in a team that you might want to be a selector or a mentor involved in the tactics or anything like that you want to be involved with the team and actually the team's welfare and that is uh, they're invaluable and it's a great way to to be, to be involved um to, but I'm going to talk a little bit about money and fundraising. Um, women are brilliant fundraisers, absolutely phenomenal fundraisers. Um, and when you put a, gr a group of women together with a, with a task to do, particularly when it comes to raising money, they are absolutely brilliant at collective fundraising. And I don't mean asking for money. I mean actually coming up with the ideas and implementing those ideas and uh, putting together project plans for fundraising for a year it's and they they will go and do the tasks and the jobs that nobody else kind of wants to do and it, it there's a huge role for fundraising within our organization at the moment um you know as the numbers are growing that we need more money and that's just it it's it's just a very very simple simple addition um and it I've seen kind of groups of fundraising, uh, women fundraising within clubs um, and they're, you know, the ideas and the implementation of those ideas are just absolutely brilliant. One other area that I think we're, um, that I'm seeing kind of a growth of, of female leaders being involved in is in the strength and conditioning side and the physio side and the sports nutrition side of, um, of the game um, and seeing women with, um, with, the with the professional skills um the, the pre pre professional skills and experience actually being involved um within the game is just great to see it's so important um for for particularly for young girls coming through to see those role models there that there is those uh, that there are those um spaces for women to actually be in those roles and you're seeing at a county level where there is you know the SNCs and SNCs and sports psychologists and physios and sports nutritionists and um, they're becoming more and more uh, more and more women involved in those roles and that's really really important so the one kind of thing I'm saying about roles within the organization is there are so many roles they, that list of 20 is not exhaustive um I could have put down 40 um but there is a role for everybody you just have to kind of know how to go and get them Leadership capabilities are something that we don't actually recognize in ourselves a lot. Um, and there was a study done on leadership capabilities and um what what women are very, very good at and what you know and how we actually perform in terms of uh, capability, initiative, resilience, um, self-development, drives for results, high integrity and honesty, develops others inspires and motivates others, bold leadership, builds relationships and champions change. Chosen those for a particular reason. But in a study of 50 men and 50 women, women outperformed men in each one of those 
um, leadership capabilities. If I'd asked a group of women in advance, did they think that they actually and they outperformed men in those capabilities? They would have told me absolutely not. And that's again down to a kind of a confidence side. Women have so women have all of the facets and assets needed to lead in any role that they take up. It's just about actually inspiring that piece of confidence and actually having that confidence to go and take and know what you're good at and lean into what you're good at and lean in and know that you can actually make a difference within this role. So a couple of things in terms of kind of recipes for success and like it like and I mean I I wrote the word career and but I mean within the organization as well but um in terms of if you if to, in order to succeed we've talked about kind of the roles the responsibilities capabilities but go for what you want for within your within your career and don't give up within uh, women in high in women with high performing careers within our organization generally tend to take up high leadership roles and so leadership roles and career kind of go hand to hand for me a lot of the time um whatever that might be that go for go for it and don't kind of give up get, get, be tenacious and tenacity is something that um that we don't actually kind of take on well because sometimes it can be seen as aggressiveness. Um, and that is just completely not the case. Hone your really, the, the skills that actually will give you big opportunities and leverage. Communicate, women are brilliant at communication. We're brilliant at developing others and be seen to develop develop others and empower others that's a brilliant asset of, of a leader if you can be seen to actually not see somebody as competition but as somebody that you can assist and develop that is showing you in such a brilliant leadership light we are emotionally intelligent by nature by nurture by everything in between it's an asset it is something that should absolutely be used and that is something that's transferable right across the board in terms of kind of pushing and motivating ourselves for success Raise your hand, speak up and be heard. Um, that is just something that we don't do enough of. And actually raising our hands and actually being proactive and raising our hands is something that's really, really, it's, it's something you feel really strong, strongly about. Um, and the other part that I actually, I didn't even type this in, but lean in, lean into what you feel. If you if you were confident and positive about something, lean into it and um, lean out of what you don't like. Don't be, don't, Feel that you have to take something on if you are not comfortable with it. A lot of the time we'll just say, yes, I'll just do that anyway. And um, it's the say no factor. It's the saying yes to what, what you're happy and confident and enjoy and lean out of what you do not enjoy, what doesn't make you happy and what do, what you do not feel is right for you. So it's a lean in, lean out component as well. Support and empower other women who are in leadership roles or trying and aspiring to lead. And I'll leave you with this, but there's nothing more powerful than a group of women with a common goal. It's something that I, I'm, it's something that's my favorite, favorite um, element of um, sporting life, um, of political life and of my personal life. Um, there's nothing that I enjoy more uh, than a group of women in a social component, in, a, um, in an emotional component or with a common goal to achieve something because I, it, there's nothing that will stop a group of women once you let them get going. So um, I know I've gone on for about 45 minutes, so I might stop there, Vinny, and take any questions that anyone might have. Thank you so much, Emma. Um, folks, the chat is now open uh, for any questions or comments that uh, you you might have. Um, and thank you so much, uh, Emma. Without obviously becoming an echo chamber, there was just so much, um, you know, useful uh, content there. Um, I really like Siobhan's uh, story that, um, you know, the, she never thought that she'd get that close to to being on Crow Park, and there she was, and all her final day, you know. I'm the, the attitude of, you know, that I suppose might be, you know, a legacy attitude of, you know, I'm just a fan. But yeah. you can be so much more. You can take those first steps to becoming a real leader within either your own club or within your own county or province or within the wider association. Um, so I just think that that's a fantastic story that, you know, that she was actually there, but she was, she was there um being presented with something that uh was was adding to the to the whole association and it was the, the, the one good club um award that i saw on her hand there so um absolutely fantastic story and it just shows that journey that people can actually make 
um, from a beginner in a club or just a fan, and I don't mean that in a derogatory way, just a fan, but to them feeling like I'm just a fan, um, to you can be anything you want, uh, within within the the, the LGFA setting, uh, just yeah, and like I think steps. the brilliant thing about Siobhan as well was, so we were in in the um the media PR media group uh for um the Learn to Lead program and. Um, in that group, it was slightly intimidating. We had Sarah Furlong and Quiva Marley Morgan. Like so, you know, and two of the most the most brilliant broadcasting minds in, within our organization, um, who were thriving and doing phenomenal work. Uh, but they're so they the brilliant thing for myself and Siobhan was they were both so brilliant with their time to us. Um, in terms of actually kind of giving that kind of, you know, confidence in um, and the technical side of the broadcasting and what to expect when you are, you know, taking out your comfort zone and asked to kind of co-commentate on a game. Um, and, you know, Siobhan thrived in that environment. And, she, you know, she's like from like I see her from fan to from from fan to role model within the organization. And that's um, it, it's a great story. I think a, a, another another um hugely important um point that you made and it was it was just right in the last slide there was to lean on people um and i suppose learn to lead from from what i understand from anybody who has been on it you you start as a learn to lead participant but you you complete learn to lead as a group um and a very tight knit group and people who do lean on each other and it doesn't, doesn't have to be in something like learn to lead it can be within your own club setting um, I mean, you you made it clear there that, you know, within your coaching structure, you have females who the, the, the girls can really look up to. But that opens the door for you to lean on each other at certain times as well. Hugely powerful to be able to have that skill to, to, to I suppose, drop your armor for a second and say, you know, what? I need to lean on somebody here. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, I think that is, you know, the, the, the whole kind of, concept of kind of lean it like that lean on someone we generally tend to just try push through and we don't actually going to have the um we don't stop and take that minute to actually say do you know what who could I actually lean on or ask for ask for help um in terms of what you actually want to do and how you want to achieve it um and that is the kind of the female psyche at times is I'll just push through and get it done rather than that kind of you know um, not realizing that we actually probably would get more out of actually that kind of lean on it as well. And, you know, the lean in, like it's about enjoyment. Um, and enjoy, if you're enjoying something, you will get so much more out of it. Um, but if you need to lean on somebody so that you can lean out of something, um, you'll actually get more out of that because you'll end up not uh, disliking immensely what you're actually doing and being involved in the roles that we're doing as well. Like our organization is so, so busy. Like it's so busy um, in terms of like, there's so many demands now in terms of, you know, of coach, if you're coaching, if you're involved in administration, if you're playing, um, there are so many positive demands there that you can be at fear of burnout and not actually enjoying what you're doing and being involved in the organizations. You need to be quite cognizant of, um, of that kind of lean out perspective as well. Absolutely. And funnily enough, um, we just got a comment there um, from Siobhan herself, who's on the call. Siobhan's um, on the call. So she Plus is thanking you for the lovely comments and you're a star. Uh, so empowering and such an inspiration to us all. So she wishes to thank you for that. Um, so that's absolutely brilliant. And I, I hope you 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 enjoyed the the webinar, Siobhan. Um, and it's fantastic that um you actually um took the time to join us this evening. Um, Tara has uh, just said, "Well done, Emma." A great reminder of just how remarkable we and our organisation are. I love to lean. Uh, I love the lean in, but especially the lean out. Right, super. Yeah, no, that is like that is going to look. It is that kind of important side. Um, of of kind of what we're doing because you want people to be like emotionally, uh, emotionally, physically, and minding their well being, being involved in kind of the organization. Like it's we're trying to get so many people to be involved in the organization, what we're doing on a volunteer basis. But once you're in, you generally tend to get a million jobs, um, as well. And it's actually getting that kind of fine balance as well, um, because you know you can end up with too few people doing too many things. And because if you tend to do something well, you get another job um, and then you get another job. Um, so it is actually 
um, enjoying the organization um, for what it is as well. And I think with the two case studies on purpose, you know, I just thought it was really funny. Both of them ended up in Crow Park and it was their, both of their highlights. Um and you know and both of them would be attendees in Crow Park as fans, um but being kind of you know within that kind of playing pitch and um it just goes to show within the organisation that the organisation has so many facets now, um you know with the Gaelic for Mothers and others blitzes in Crow Park you've got Go Games blitzes in Crow Park you've got small sided games at half time we've got coming a bond school in the school constantly kind of you know um with different kind of attractions as well and now with the growing number of playing numbers as well there's opportunities and uh, for everybody from a coaching perspective to an organizational perspective to be involved in the organization um and you know we've been very lucky as well with kind of the empowering sponsorship that we've had say from sports direct for gaelic from others and others the little partnerships the tg car partnerships they have enhanced our organization massively and greatly um to make sure that we have media roles for commentators like, you know, Sarah Gerd, Creva, um, Michelle Ryan, you know, th these are our familiar faces that we're seeing every Saturday and Sunday on the TV. Five years ago, would we have been seeing that? Not so much. Um, you know, and that's kind of showing the testament and the growth of the organization as well. But those opportunities have opened up and the roles have, op have opened up um, and they've been grabbed and they've been taken. And the, the three girls I've mentioned have grabbed them and run with them, which is just, you know, phenomenal. And the uh, for any young person wanting to be involved with the LGFA and you want to be a commentator, get your Gale get in order. Um, it is, you know, that's something that is... Um, a, it's brilliant and it's brilliant to see um so there are like there's a space for everybody within our organization um from you know like one of the one of the most vital people that's involved with me and my team is one of the parents takes the jerseys every week um you know she takes jerseys home every and god help any other parent that tries to take them that's her that, that she has been doing that for four years and that is something that she loves doing that's her contribution and that's how she feels she can contribute um, to her child being involved in our team and that's like it's you know it's something that's brilliant you need um you need people from all kind of all walks of everything that is involved in anything if we ever have um if we ever have a, a club come to to visit us we'd always put on kind of sandwiches and stuff like that and it's always the parents that kind of get involved and do that as well and and they find that kind of role there as well so you know there's there's roles right across the board in in leadership and in there's leadership roles the one thing i would love to see more of and i think it's somewhere that we are failing though as well is um the lack of numbers of women who are actually chairpersons of clubs um who are actually in the chair um across the country i'd love to see that grow um i thought would that would be something that would make me very happy i don't think we have enough of them um i don't see the kind of pathway where they actually are taking on those roles um and particularly with the one club approach um in a lot of clubs that that's something that hasn't kind of come through and hopefully that glass ceiling gets broken a little bit more than it has uh, but you're seeing women at kind of you know at treasurer levels at pro levels at you know vice chair levels children's officer irish officers um like we have a 50 50 split on our committee in terms of males to females um but yeah, we are our chairperson's a man. I don't know who the new chairperson is. I'll tell you in 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 twenty minutes when it's over. Um, <laughs> but um, um, but um, that's not that's something that's not happening across the country. And I think that is one avenue, uh, where we really need to kind of have a look and address as well. Uh, folks, I think that on this webinar the challenge has been laid down. Okay, so Emma is is in a roundabout way laying the challenge down. When are we going to hear of our first participant who came in to Gaelic Games through the Gaelic Promoters and Others uh, sponsored by Sports Direct program and became chair of their club? Okay, so that's what we want to hear uh, sometime in the next future. We want to highlight it um, and we want to make sure that this is known by everybody that this has happened. Um, we want the first Gaelic from Mothers and Others club chairperson. That's Love what that. we're aiming for. Love and we want and we want to see them then after we get the first we want to see them spread across across the country i think uh one last thing before we before we wrap up and i think it was very a hugely important um slide in general emma was was you know you, you listed off the number of roles that people can now take up and i don't I like whenever somebody's asked to volunteer in a club it's like it's this 
magic floating cloud of of volunteerism. Thankfully, in your slide, you 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 put them in 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 their in their boxes, and we were able to see. Look, you can look at this, and you can pick and choose. What is you know where does my strength lie here? You know, maybe I'm somebody who has a graph for refereeing, or you know I you know I look at it and think you know I could do that. You know, and the door is always open with the LGFA. Huge resources and huge um opportunities for people to upskill the FLO role. Oh my God, what an an enriching role to be able to have with a team. Like the FLO role has just become such a role of importance with every team. Um, to be able to have that, um, to be able to have that um gift to be able to give to to our players. Um, so look, uh, we'll wrap it up there. Um, Emma, thank you so much. Um, oh, absolutely phenomenal, um, phenomenal webinar. Um, thank you to everybody who has tuned in live. Thank you to everybody who is watching this on a, on a, on a watchback. Um, a, a hugely valuable, um, just under an hour. Um, so fantastic, and so many, so many messages to take away. Um, best of luck in whatever role you've been designated tonight, Emma, from your, yeah, from your AGM. <laughs> And as we said, the challenge is laid down. Let's see those Gaelic from others and others participants taking up those leadership roles, uh, club, county, provincial, and uh, national. Emma, anything you want to say just in, in closing? No, oh, no the, uh, great. Thanks a million for the opportunity. It was great to um, chat about women in leadership. It's um, um, delighted to be um, to, to do it, Vinny. And it's... Um, um, Best of luck. Uh, well done to um to Gaelic from Goods and others and Sports Direct for putting these on. I think they're really helpful. Um, and it's great to just show some of the avenues um to get more women involved in in our sport and what we're doing as well. So um no thanks a million. I I really enjoyed it. Slan live, can I read it?